Trying to condense down or talk about certain franchises on the show is sometimes more than a little aggravating. Not only is it hard to find subjects that I want to talk about that haven't been covered by other folks to ad infinitum, like my silver video, but there are also those subjects that are just different from others in forms of opinion, like my upcoming Maleficent video. That one is going to be fun to see the comments on. And when it comes to the anime series Tenchi Muyo, well... The subject I'm wanting to talk about is a little weirder than most. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Fascinating Fiction. So, for those of you who are like me and grew up in the 90s are probably wondering, what is Prof talking about when he says Tenchi Muyo is weird? It's just one of the first harem anime that folks here in America got exposed to, and is among the very first big anime series that really gained a foothold in the West, thanks to Toonami. But outside of that, there's not really all that much odd about it, right? Well, wrong actually. Because the development of this series is among the weirdest you'll ever see in anime. So what exactly makes Tenchi and company just so weird compared to some of the other animes you've seen? Well, the first, and probably the easiest thing to explain, is that it's a franchise that has had its story told multiple times. Something that you usually see a lot more often here in America with things like Transformers or the Ninja Turtles. There are a few Japanese animes and other series that do this as well, such as Gundam, but it's much rarer to see. Tenchi itself currently has two OVAs, four different actual animes of varying lengths, three feature films, five spin-offs, an untold amount of light novels, and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, so there's a lot, and it's not exactly something I can cover in its entirety in these videos without doing a massive retrospective or a special month dedicated to it. That said, if you do want me to do a special month dedicated to this series, or any else, be sure to tell me. It even gets weirder when you actually look at the franchise outside of just how big and sprawling it is. Let's take the initial OVA of Tenchi, titled Tenchi Muyo Ryo Oki, as an example here. Why it's actually called this when the actual character of Ryo Oki doesn't even appear until Episode 3 is something I'm still trying to figure out, but eh? Regardless, we immediately know something unusual about how this series is constructed, namely, just how long this particular OVA has been updated. The original six episodes of this particular Tenchi series actually started out in 1992, consisting of six episodes that had become so popular that a seventh came out about a year later. Then, in 94, we got a second OVA with another six episodes. That in and of itself is unusual, especially considering the fact that when this particular series ended was when the first official anime, Tenchi Universe, actually started to air. But it doesn't even stop there, as eight years later, in 2003, a third OVA of seven episodes came out to pick up where the cliffhanger in the second OVA had left off. And just when you think that length of time between OVAs is weird, it takes them another 10 years after that to go and give us a fourth OVA of the series. And as I was double checking for this script later on, I learned that there was another OVA that's another six episodes coming out this year. Put that in perspective for a moment. The initial story of Tenchi Muyo has been told over the course of 20 years. I'll be entirely honest, that's something that I can't call offhand that I have seen any other series do, be it here in America or in Japan. The next two series, Tenchi Universe and Tenchi in Tokyo, are much more your regular anime flair. Of the two, Universe is my favorite of the bunch, simply because that, while it still has its harem anime trappings of our main character ending up on the receiving end of the affections of seven different gals, we also get a bit of adventuring storyline. Tenchi in Tokyo was more about Tenchi getting an eighth member of his harem, but, well, he actually seemed to be in love with her and it was focused more on her than the rest of the space ladies. The other two animes that spawned off this series that actually includes the Tenchi Muyo name proper include Tenchi Muyo GPX and Ai Tenchi Muyo. 
GPX is a series in which, while apparently set within the same timeline and era of Tenchi Muyo Ryo Oki, actually stars a character who is Tenchi pretty much in everything but name, being drafted into the space police that one of the characters from the main series, Mihoshi, is part of. Other than dealing with the space police and the occasional guest appearance by one of the cast members from the original show, there's nothing much, if anything, that actually connects this to Tenchi. I, Tenchi Muyo, on the other hand, was apparently there both to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the franchise, as well as to revive it completely, apparently having gone dormant a few years before. I'll be entirely honest, I know absolutely nothing about this particular installation of the franchise, outside of the fact that apparently Tenchi has to go be a student teacher at an all-girls school because... Washu, I guess? While it is weird that this is the actual plotline they're going with, considering the fact that Washu has been a goddess at least in one of the other universes, it's not that surprising that she would cause some chaos that would result in this being the way to fix things. And that's not even going into the spin-off series that Tenchi has spawned, including the Magical Girl Pretty Sammy series! No, I I'm not kidding. What I had originally thought was just a throwaway gag in one of the episodes of Tenchi Universe has actually spawned into its own series where one of the major characters is a magical girl a la Cardcaptor Sakura or Sailor Moon. It's also been firmly established at this point that any other series created by Tenchi's creator, Masaki Kajishima, is also connected to Tenchi itself in one way or another, with crossovers existing for them as well, both in anime, manga, and light novel format. But perhaps what's the most interesting thing about the series to me isn't so much just how many variations of it there has been over a 20 year period, but just what those differences they actually offer to you. While we do get a lot of similarities between them, such as Ryoko being a villainess, Ayaka being a princess, and Washu being a mad scientist, it's sometimes interesting just seeing what these characters can get up to when you just put very slight differences in their situations. A good example of this is how in the OVA of the series, Washu was actually made out to be Ryoko's mother, and yet the two aren't related at all when you look in towards the Tenchi Universe series. And considering how close the two series were actually made in their existence, it's a little surprising just how much some core differences are between the two. And let's not even try to get into figuring out how everything connects in the end, it's like trying to understand the Kingdom Hearts storyline. No thank you. Tenchi as a series, as I said at the start of the episode, is kind of weird. It's not as long lived as some other franchises, and yet the sheer bulk of what's spawned from this one kid meeting up with the girls from space is nothing short of amazing. And with more to look forward to in the future, there's little doubt that this series is going to continue for a long, long time. With that, I hope you have all enjoyed another episode of Fascinating Fiction, and will hopefully look forward for more to come. Should you have any suggestions on something you'd like to see me cover, please leave a comment below, as well as liking the video and subscribing if you wish to see more content like this. It really does help us out. Be sure to also check out Getting With The Program, a more off-the-cuff show in which Kitty Cross, Ash and Sky, and I go through a series that one of us are not familiar with episode by episode, and give our honest thoughts about them. I also have a Twitter and a Twitch if you wish to follow us there, where we usually will play games and just give my general thoughts about what's going on at the time. But until then, folks, stay frosty.